to Alien Theorist Theorizing Case File 281, the Withville UFO sighting. I'm Brady. I'm Zell. I'm Dan. And I'm Andrew. Um, this one goes back to one of our favorite places. West Virginia. Virginia. Mount Mount Mama. Yeah, this is like right by the Blue Ridge Mountains. Blue Ridge Mountains. It is in the Blue Ridge Mountains, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, I was like, as soon as they mentioned, it's like, I know about that place. I know I know all about the Blue Ridge Mountains. Well, Johnny D fucking. It's pretty close to the Shenandoah River, right? Yes. Yeah. Is Is that the only river that runs through there? Uh, This is the biggest one, probably. (laughs) Yeah. And that one is it's the, that's it. The down the Shenandoah, Shenandoah Valley. Valley. Hey, I mean, uh, honest, it's the only one that matters. It's and Dan, so. do you ever, you ever, with a teardrop in your eye, miss the sweet taste of moonshine? Um, I don't know if with Phil is the that moonshine there. I don't know. Last time I had moonshine, I got blasted. I probably don't miss the taste <laughs> of moonshine. <laughs> like, for never want to drink it ever again. <laughs> honest, I'm gonna be honest with you, Dan. I feel a bit cheated in our friendship. After watching that untold or unsolved mysteries and listening to all those fucking wicked accents, and then you yeah. show up with nothing. Where's your accent? Nothing. Where's your cool North? That's Vir- that's West South. Virginia that's accent. Southwestern Virginia. South. Yeah, I don't even. Virginia. Where's the touch? I don't. There's nothing mm-hmm. there. Nope. You don't even have twang. a bit of twang. Yeah. There's, no. there's no, you don't I'm from Northern Virginia. Silly. Metropolitan Virginia. <laughs> You're civilized. Yeah. yeah. Civilized folk. That pinky out, eh? When you drink. Uh-huh. Right? Uh-huh. Yeah, everyone, everyone from where I'm at does no, 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 will be like technically non accident. Like it's just yeah. there's, it just sounds like this. <laughs> there's not, and then, but and if you go, if you go two like, hours south, everyone's a country bumpkin or what? Pretty much, yeah. Not, not even, tw- not even that. Like maybe like an hour south, like you start hearing the, you start hearing that, that twang a bit. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's where you're. <laughs> um, no, uh, this this is uh, yeah. This took place in Withville, Virginia, which Withville um, is about. It's pretty close to where I went to university for my undergraduate, Radford University. Um, it's not that it's not that far. It's, it's four uh, it's four four hours and some change, like from where I live now. Uh, but yeah, it's like right next to the to the city of Radford where I used to go to university. <laughs> I really read I really read this this whole time as Wittyville. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know. Why I, I, I started know out with Whiteville, really and then I thought it was Whiteville, and then I heard him say Withville on the Unsolved Mysteries. So I was like, "Oh, okay, it's Withville. All right, that's fine." I think you're saying it with a lisp. Withville. 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 How well going down to Withville? <laughs> we'll see you soon. Uh, the series of events that we're going to be talking about took place around October 7th of 1987, where you had uh, radio reporter Danny Gordon. Uh, doing his his usual check in uh, with the county sheriff, and the sheriff is, had some interesting information which is to share wild. with him. We, what a wild time! This is like the only time when I read when I like read this part and heard this part, I was like, "It's fucking insane." A local radio disc jockey would call up the local law enforcement, and be like, "Hey, any breaking stories, or pal?" He's like, oh, "Not today." You not know? today. I shot it. I shot five chickens with two shots, and he's like. That's the le- that's gonna be that's the breaking news. Headline today. news, <laughs> front page. Yeah. That's gonna be top of the hour, there, sheriff. Um, so now, according to Danny, when he got his information, his daily check in with the sheriff, the sheriff did give him stuff. He said, "Yeah, like we don't really have anything to report, but <laughs> yeah, old, old, old Bob was drunk driving again, and some cows got let out the pasture." Oh yeah, and there was about fifty calls about some sort of unidentified flying object. You think this? Uh, you think this sheriff's getting kickbacks from old Danny, Danny boy? I think. Well, I think they they had a <laughs> they had a just a normal old boy relationship. Like, like they'd known each other forever. Or yeah, I mean, like, what are you getting some like radio t shirts and hats or some shit? Like, why is he? What's the point? You know, what's his sheriff? You're always color nine in my books. He's getting yeah, first dibs on all the concert tickets for sure. Must be. I mean, Gordon is Gordon is a legit Withville native. Like he lived in Withville all of his life. Like he went to a, a pretty much attending school, playing football there. He graduated from Withville Community College. He had a degree in uh, business management, but his uh, but he wanted to get into radio broadcasting or broadcast journalism, and so he became 
uh, pretty much the local radio uh, DJ or news radio DJ, essentially. Dude, um, it's like 8,200 people in Whitfield. Yeah, not that many. That's like now, too. <laughs> yeah, that's now. That's nothing. That's like a gas station and a <coughs> handful of houses. Yeah. One stop. Um, if so, yeah. So uh, pretty much every day he'd call uh, the sheriff, uh, Wayne Pike, and he would ask him if anything was going on. And so the, this particular morning, uh, Pike told him about three of his deputies who all were claiming that they had seen a UFO. Um, and so Pike to, to characterize him and like, he's, he's not your terror, your stereotype, like Southern sheriff. Like he's not your in the heat of the night. Roscoe kind of, Pico kind of Coltrane. Yeah. He's not a, uh, he's not that kind of you in a heap of trouble boy. Like he's not that yeah, kind of guy, yeah. um, but he is a very, again. uh, Just... Gordon described him more of as a, a well-educated and articulate man um, who was, he had, he ran a very well-organized department and he had a, you know, a pretty good know? sense of humor because he was fucking reporting to the local disc jockey every morning. <laughs> I feel like we're getting we're giving a guy a lot of credit that's fucking rested three people in sixty. How is that? How is, how is that weird? I, I, I like how is that weird that he is that he's reporting to like he's telling the the you local radio fucking, DJ about uh, news confidentiality. Like, yeah. like that's fucking. Well, he's just like, have you it's seen like, anything weird? Like you seen? You know what? No, today? it does make sense now when you think of with the wait wait that they, oh, okay. where they don't arrest anyone and nothing goes on. So because it's like shame him in the public. He's calling <laughs> yeah. and he goes, he's like, oh, hey, Danny. He's like, well, you know, we just arrested old Bill for adultery. <laughs> <laughs> I would assume they keep most of the names like uh, blurred out, just like we I do with our mongoose. So. Well, with <laughs> our mongoose files, like kind of seem equivalent. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, <laughs> Bill, anything exciting friend. happened? Well, uh, you know, Mr. Johnson went down for fucking kitty porn. You're like, ah. I don't want anything to do with that shit. Charges, like. charges are pending, though. We'll yeah. see. Yeah, I think he probably. I from the descriptions of Pike, I'm sure he kind of had the uh, the sense to just keep it to very superficial Honest, kind honestly, of weird stuff that would be no, put no, out no. There. This relationship between Danny and the sheriff makes a lot of sense later on in the story with how Danny acts with any other law enforcement agency that he comes across when he's true. Right. When he's, he's like, he's looking he's for a information. Yeah, he's a he's fucking patriot, patriot he's and patriot. he's a little too buddy buddy, uh, as we'll yeah. get into it later on down the story. But that that as we're saying this, I'm like, this makes it's adding up now. It's adding up in my head. Uh so when they went through the entire thing, apparently there was a total of five police officers uh who managed to catch sight of this what they described as seeing like a bright red and green light in the sky. Uh and uh, most of these, at least a couple more than a few of them, had previous military training, it uh, was what Pike said, and that they couldn't have really been fooled by something like if it had Wait, been just like a plane or like a helicopter. Cops. There's five cops in a town of hundred people. I mean, no, that, no there's just 200. Oh, so there's probably like five on shift or something. I bet yeah. yeah. So, no. Obviously, this fucking saucer either went over the detachment or a fucking donut shop. Like, what are these five guys doing hanging around with each other? Shouldn't they be working? <laughs> Safety. Meeting. Yeah. Why aren't they spread out a little? I mean, they may have been. I'm just saying like across oh, maybe, the whole ca- county, yeah. like they were they, they had five of them checking in and seeing sided. like, yeah, we saw it. Well, I guess uh, it is their job to observe and report. Right, fucking staring at the sky, looking for weird lights. Yeah, three of those uh, cops were neighborhood watch. <laughs> yeah, uh, the ones who were close enough to, get, or you know, judged that they were close enough to be able to to hear something. They said that they that craft made no noise, uh, and that they were they were pretty certain that what they saw was not an airplane and it wasn't a helicopter uh, of what they had seen. Um, so after 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 Danny got this information. Um, Pike also kind of relayed to him like another kind of story about a, a family from Ohio uh, that was actually visiting the Graham's Forge area in the eastern part of the county. And they had reported that an object, some type of unidentified flying object, had actually ran them off the road or, you know, distracted them enough that they, they took off off the road. Um, and that's we've we've discussed countless cases like that where, you know, the one most. in Australia, Just you know, the, the grandmas and. The, the, this, the, was that family was it sushi was their last name uh o'doyle <laughs> 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 like, 
That's all I can picture for whatever reason. Doyle roof. <laughs> Punching the roof as they go yeah. on the roof right <laughs> off the cliff. Fucking hit a banana peel and fucking the whole family gets wiped out. Uh, in their report to to the deputy uh, of what they had seen, they said that this Gen- low flying Gen- object had come at their car and pretty much forced them off the road. You know, they fearing a collision with this object. And apparently the family just watched this object as it just kind of hovered a short distance away from them with just these blinking lights and making no sound. And then it apparently like it, it kind of had like a flat gray color uh, on the side uh, that was nearest to the family is what they described seeing. And then it just kind of sped off in a northern direction is what from what they could judge. Again, making absolutely no noise, just instant acceleration just taking off. Um, it's always no noise, but all, there's always some type of light associated. It's weird. It's a light form. <laughs> Maybe it's like so. Propulsion. What do you think? Like, do you think that's just their their technology is just soundless, or do you think they're like making it that way to stay somewhat incognito? But then they have these flashing fucking lights on there. That's what I mean. Maybe the lights are Weird. the propulsion. Maybe it is silent, and that's why we see the light. The light, some type of like, you only seen one part of the spectrum, but it's shooting some type because, of energy. I mean, that makes sense. Like, I, that's an interesting thought because I was thinking that like. I guess this is what, what are those things called transmediums? Is that what we're, what they were called where it goes land to sea and mm-hmm. stuff? Yep. Mm-hmm. Because if, if something was to go that fast, like wouldn't you, wouldn't it make a sonic boom when it broke the sound barrier? Like just going fast. It would, if it was in operating in our laws, right? Like even, even if it had like no means of propulsion, you would think that when it got to that speed and it broke the sound barrier, it would make that sonic boom, which, these things never really do. It's so that's an interest traveling outside of, in between realities, wherever they see yeah, it. Like the gimbal, or, you know, some, it has like some that, sort of some sort of force light field, like that force field around it that kind of makes it all blurry. Oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah so you can't get the photo of it, right? It's the same type what? of camouflage that Bigfoot wears. But didn't we talk? We talked about like a, a way of traveling. It was like you built you like the ship makes the field around it and then travels through it, right? So it doesn't exactly. get torn apart or something. So yeah. Maybe whatever that, whatever the field they're generating. Uh, I never thought about the no sonic boom thing with the, these things traveling so fast. Because you think they would. It's interesting. So it's like, it makes sense to transmit, but that's why they go. Because it's not even really cutting through air. There's no friction. Like, it, even though it's in our earth, it's like, it's not being affected by friction and or you know, gravity air or part- anything. Yeah, yeah, or nothing. Interesting. <laughs> Uh, so Gordon took the story that he got from the sheriff and he ran with it and he ran this, uh, 60 second story on WFXR news, uh, you know, saying that he was excited to share a different kind of story with the listeners, but, uh, Gordon, Danny Gordon wasn't exactly prepared for just how common UFO sightings were in Withville. This would be his first experience, uh, with finding out that, well, those police officers weren't the first and definitely not the last people to have seen UFOs in the Withville area. Now, the other interesting thing that I, is like, he, he ran this, like at the end of his show, he usually would just talk, do a, like a, like a BS story. Like, like I said, at the top of the show, human interest story, a fucking sign right? off like with a cop shot five chickens with two bullets. He ran that as a story the day before, right? Like at the, the tail end. And he just makes a 60 second. And it basically goes viral. All 8,200 people hear about it. <laughs> um, now, none of the none of the police officers, because uh, fearing ridicule, actually did any interviews for Danny Garden, Danny Gordon, and or any really members of the press. Um, but See, the new, and but that's, that's normal. That's normal. The sheriff just having open lines of discussion with Danny Gordon in the morning every morning is unusual. Well, that's it, and, but like obviously he doesn't mention that these stories are coming from the sheriff, though, right? <laughs> the sheriff, like I'm assuming the sheriff he's, probably goes. He calls. He goes. Yeah, I heard this from a friend. Didn't of a get it from me. Friend of a friend well, but I'm wondering, like, they probably mean? go for coffee. Like they're good old boys. They probably know each other well. They meet at fucking Martha's place for a fucking cherry pie and a couple coffees, and then he gives them the you know the deets of what's been happening. 
He gives him the deets, and the sheriff slips him. He's like, the table anything happened, sheriff? Drugs. He's like, you know, I can't tell you. He's like, well, this key lime pie is telling me differently. And he's like, oh, Danny, you know the key to my vault. <laughs> Spills every morning. Uh, and so uh, the story kind of blew up from these these UFO sightings. So like, yeah, Danny Gordon started getting a number of calls coming in and not just from uh, people who were claiming to have seen UFOs either before or after the the ones that the uh, the events that the share, the sheriff's deputies had shared with him. But you had um, like you had other newspapers, like both like local and like Virginia newspapers as well as you know this is back in the day when there was more than like one newspaper like this like um and then you had like national newspapers like coming in and like calling up danny and being like what what is what is going on here like what is happening um i, I think like it's important to talk, like when he talked about this I, I imagine like he's the number one hit fucking show at that point in time yeah and yeah, in like with Phil. when he told he's, that story his show. switchboard lit the fuck up in minutes Right, like yeah, the got, lines, the lines were clogged. Yeah, and like people with people saying, and some people had stories up to like years, years and years old. Other people describing different types of sightings, different types of crafts. Other people were saying that like they've had issues with their livestock being sco- spooked by these lights and stuff like that. I think one of the biggest things though is everybody was that same common thing where they did the, sh- the ships were completely silent. Yeah, there were there were different Slowly. descriptions. Yeah, there were some that like were completely different descriptions of like the different crafts. Like some of them, yeah, Somebody they said, said they were like, like a shape of a T. Yeah, they had like T shapes. They had like every square. every type of aircraft, every every type of UFO shape that you know. If you get one of those posters and it's the common UFO shapes, you probably had one from each category. You had people with the triangular shape, seeing it with the lights on the each end. You had circular. You had spherical. You had every type of UFO and yeah. people calling in and being like they had seen something. And you know, now Danny Danny Gordon, you know, as, kind of. Uh, painted himself as a a skeptical, like a very a very skeptic, you know, practical person. He, you know, his interest in broadcast journalism, like he was, he was always interested in being kind of like seen as a credible person and kind of pursuing the truth and just kind of bringing that to to the public. And so, w- with all of these people calling in, he wasn't exactly totally I, I, well at this point at the very beginning uh danny hadn't really jumped on the bandwagon and been like yeah there's ufos for sure he was like people are seeing something and we need to figure out what that is <laughs> there's not a there's not for in my mind there was not a second that went through his mind he went people are loving this we got to strike while the iron's hot i've never been more popular the radio show we gotta have a Absolutely. ufo hour every sunday oh, i'm gonna it's write gonna a book a- <laughs> this is gonna be this is gonna be my my Baghdad or whatever reporters. My do. Baghdad. <laughs> what? You know, his reporters. A go big story is what you're something. saying. Big story. Yeah, Baghdad's big story. A big story. That's 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 yeah. yeah. Well, I that's mean, I, I, see how, I see how you got there. Yeah. He did. He did write a book, and so yeah. For, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Um, he did write a book with another journalist, uh, Paul Dellinger, called Don't Look Up, The Real Story Behind the Virginia UFO Sightings, uh, where I pulled some of the info for this case file. Um, but yeah, it's talking about it. But, you know, he describes at least in, in that book, he talks about him being a very uh, starting out as a skeptic. And then as events unfolded, uh, he became more and more of a believer. It kind of went more and more down the, the rabbit hole as well. We'll, well see. <laughs> i think when you i think especially you know when and and i i would say like it kind of happens with us too it's like i'm sure of these hundreds and hundreds of phone calls he's getting he's just like oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah but then every now and then there's some where he's like okay the, that's a little interesting and what you just said there kind of ties into what this person told me and you start to get these loose connections and you're like well these people don't know each other and they don't know they told me this and now their stories kind of corroborate each other it would be very interesting I'm, I'm like i'm sure you would kind of be like you would start to be like all right well this maybe there is something here maybe these people are seeing something and so they they're not um the people of withville are not exactly strangers to having uh unusual aircraft or kind of seeing like uh strange aerial maneuvers around yeah, fucking their... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Virginia's... west virginia that's west virginia <laughs> it's, all, it's all virginia you say how far is virginia you can't fly as a crow flies <laughs> is the mothman you don't think flies? mothman can fucking glide glide across uh 
and but we have a like here in Virginia, we got tons of Air Force bases and stuff like this. So I think uh, I think they said Langley. What's is the one, one you got? The, Langley. Yeah. Langley is one of the closer ones, and that's one that is very um, like Langley Air Force Base is just like where they would you know that's where you would scramble out jets from. That's and all of those things. So they were used to Air seeing Force, these things, like that area too, being like so close to the Pentagon and stuff. Yeah, be it, like super, like super heavily fortified. Uh, yeah, I, I Washington D.C. itself like has the large, I you know, I, duh, I, like kind of a dumb moment, but it's like uh, it is the largest non-fly zone in the United States. Like Dude, they, I, they like, probably uh, have the most sophisticated air defense weapons there too. Probably like buried under the city. If an, if some type of enemy jet came in, they'd probably like lift up. Set like this, their version of Central Park would lift up with some big turrets. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I could just imagine the Pentagon just shifts open. It's it just, actually just a, a fucking hangar that just yeah. does look like a giant GI Joe base. It's just like, yeah, yeah it just rail, rail guns come out of the top of the white, out of the Washington said. monument. And every, just like, every street light just flips up fucking hyper beams. Fucking shooting you know, in the when, sky. you know, when they started construction on the Pentagon, no, 1500 BC, September 11th, 1941. Oh shit! Ooh, interesting. Interesting. Uh, interesting. Uh, the Pentagon was actually built on a, a prior civilization's yeah foundation burial ground. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's where the tech yeah. came from. Makes sense. Yeah. It actually um, predates the pyramid with extractor. Yeah, that's yeah. fucking yeah, um, that conspiracy. It's true. Look it up. Yeah. Uh, one of the more there. one of the more interesting reports that this is his uh, first Gordon contracting Lucy. job. Uh, one of the more interesting reports that uh, Gordon received is that he got a caller, uh, Patricia. It's one Aker. solid block. <laughs> There's nothing like it in, the, in all the world. <laughs> Forget the 50 ton block. It's one block. Have you looked at it? There's not even, a, you can't even put a credit card in anywhere. <laughs> it's, it's one block. Uh, <laughs> Um, we Patricia... should do DC tours where we tell people that we run a tour telling people the the it's a megalithic structure. I'm pretty sure I had one of those in Rome where the guy like we had a we had a tour guide that we booked out of a hostel and I think he was just bullshitting us the whole way through. It was like, yeah, Julius Caesar died here, and you're like, yeah, I don't know about that, buddy. <laughs> like, this is an Italian restaurant in the middle of it's nowhere. Like a bubble tea place. <laughs> yeah, he's like, all right, now you can buy some jade in the back. <laughs> yeah, this kitchen over here, this is where Caesar died. You can also get great antipasti antipasti here. You're yeah, like, yeah. Uh... <laughs> we should have started. You have to buy something. We should start a podcast that rivals hardcore history, but it's all completely fake, and we make it up on the <laughs> softcore history. <laughs> Somebody hasn't already thought of it. <laughs> wrong, wrong history. Uh, Maybe just yeah. we just tell people like, can you? Because can you show me that the Pentagon hasn't always been there? I'm yes. I'm sure there's before there are pictures. Fo- there are photos. There might, there might some, yeah, yeah, might yeah. That's what NASA wants you to think. Yep. Sure. <laughs> uh so uh patricia aker was a resident of fort chiswell which is just west of withville and she uh she told this is kind of interesting little pieces that like uh, her and her husband uh were on a road that was near i guess their local fish hatchery out there and they seen that they had they had sighted what uh, some type of very large aircraft um that was flying very low and they couldn't hear anything uh, from this thing like it was just they couldn't they couldn't hear any sound from this from this aircraft and they weren't sure what it was doing and it was like her husband like it startled her husband to the point that he said like oh my goodness that's a ufo and that and that i guess like that's made the kids start crying i guess the kids were freaking out like in the in the car as an but adult she, i'd probably cry yeah. But the I'm but the strange thing is the strange thing is that, that they were able to identify him. She's like they were they were big airplanes. She was like these were big airplanes. But the thing was is that like they were out around like seven p.m., which was kind of like at that time was like this is like October, so it was like seven o'clock at night, and it was dark. And she's like I don't. She's like I don't know what they were doing out there, but they were flying really really slow. Um, she she said that they were painted army green. Um, but they look like they're just the big army transport planes, like these big 
army planes like flying around and it's like okay so you had the ufos like a couple nights ago flying around here all over the place and then you've got like you know air force and or army planes like flying around yeah maybe looking for something it's kind of uh it's it's a it's a weird look for sure um and so media outlets across the country just picked up on this story and like television crews just started like flooding into Whitville. Right. Uh, and just kind of just trying to pick up on what was going on and what what the story was uh, that was going on. Because, I mean, if something happens in Virginia, it usually gets I think it usually gets national coverage just because we're, it's so close to Washington, yeah, D.C. Yep. And it's yeah. like most of the, probably the national news stuff can like you can send people down there and be like, hey, can you go check this out? So it's it's. Like, I don't God think it's a real mystery. With Phil? <laughs> yeah, with Phil. Like, where is that? <laughs> this is back in the days before That's Google in Maps. Fuck. Like, I, oh my God. Um, it's actually yeah. not that bad. I think you just have to hop on eighty one and get down there. It's not that, it's not too bad. But um, yeah, you're still like driving down. Like, it is it is very like almost the the end tip of Virginia. Uh, it's like the neck of like that little part down there in Virginia. Uh. And yeah, so it's like you had this entire like media circus going on in Whitfield, which was just a, a something a lot of people weren't really uh, like prepared for. For some of them, a lot of where's them. Every, where's everybody taking a shit? This is a town of a hundred people. Like, there's only fucking one toilet. <laughs> <laughs> it's digging a holes out behind the van. There's <laughs> um, <laughs> a public. Zell's concerned. They're all pulling a Zell in the alleyways. Looks like San Francisco. Oh, it's disgusting. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Danny. A, wait, sorry. Is that a real thing? I always hear what? that as a rumor that there's an like there's apps and shit to tell your people shit in San Francisco. Is that real? I'm sure. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, because there's people shit everywhere. And it tells that is, that is real. I thought that was just like yeah, that became an internet rumor. That's no, real. Like people sure. just well, shit everywhere. Maybe I got confused by the rumor too, but. I feel like my cousin lived there and he told me about it. So See, there's people shit all over that. Pretty gross. Friend, Cisco. Kelowna's not too far off. Poop. Mm-hmm. They're getting there. We got a couple shitty okay. streets. Yeah, there is. It's called Snap Crap. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Pin, you pin where it was. Yeah, you pin where it is. Oh, great. <laughs> so you can sight see them, I guess. I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is this like this story's going sensational at this point. Like it's it's hot. It's the hot story. It's grip the nation. Yeah. Grip the world. Well, it's grip Virginia, maybe. <laughs> Definitely with Phil. <laughs> um, so uh, Danny doing his his due diligence and, you know, he felt as his responsibility as the the uh, the broadcast journalist and kind of the source of the main source of the news uh, in, in with Phil kind of went out and he was making phone calls to everybody that he could possibly well, think of in order so to kind of just... figure out what was going on. Well, just to, before that, he like because of the height of this, like he he basically made a cosmic channels knockoff because there were so many people calling that he's like, okay, well we're gonna, like we can't even play songs here, can't even give away tickets. So now, like he gave he basically had like a designated hour of like, hey, like this is when you can call, this is when the time to call in, and you tell me the story, right? So like he had a he had a call in time uh, where he would receive hundreds and hundreds of these calls. Zell, do we have the audio? <laughs> Zell, do we have the audio for the radio show? Did you? Oh, yes. Yes. So, yeah, we have the audio. I believe we have a old archived audio. I think I, I had to rip it off cassette tape. This is what... Let me just uh, pull it up right here. All right. So I, mi- I missed the I missed the cue because Steph came in. Yeah. Well, I was just yeah, saying right. that I was just interjected so we could do the radio. I thought we were doing. Oh, it I thought we. I didn't even think we were doing that anymore. Yeah, I thought we were doing it earlier. I thought we missed it, and then no one. Me said too. Anything. I thought I was it was done. Like, I, I missed like, it. Oh, we're fucking. We're good. Do we not want to do? I was it? waiting. I was waiting. I was just waiting for you guys. I was waiting for someone. To... That's a good. I, I thought this was when we were gonna. Sure. Cue it yeah, up. I'm down. Whatever you guys want to do. It. Do you want to take a break first and then do it, or you want to get right into it? Do we know what we're doing? Well, we we should do it and then do a beer break. Do it and okay. then do a beer break. Yeah. Okay. So, so Dan, Dan, Dan starting in 
NP- NPR Danny. Yeah, and then basically the like the sheriff's hey, gonna come in. Make up a five 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 number for you to call in, and then the sheriff's gonna come in, and then me and Andrew, <laughs> me and Andrew will swap calls. We'll do whatever four calls. Yeah, maybe sure. three, two each. Make a little mark here. Dan's starting it. Okay. Radio voice, Dan. Good morning with Phil. This is Danny Gordon with WFXR. Uh, and for- I'm the sheriff. <laughs> uh, this is your WFXR News on the Nines coming in the middle of our John Denver morning marathon. And I'm the sheriff. We got a little bit of a new sensation here in with Phil as we uh, have a number of reports of people seeing unidentified flying objects in, aliens. Our, air, in our airspace. That's aliens, Dan. Now we're going to turn to the we're taking calls. Most of you have heard the stories coming up, and I'd like to hear from our with Vil with Villians to see what's going on out on the streets. All right, we got we got the first caller here. I'm the sheriff. You're on the line. Da- da- Danny, Danny, is that you, Danny? Danny, that's uh, that's me, caller. Uh, where are you calling Danny. from? <laughs> Who are you? Danny, are you I'm calling. Call, I'm I'm calling from down below. I could see you building right from here, buddy. Now, listen. First of all, long time listener, first time caller. I just want to tell you, I was outside, looked outside, heard some noises, came outside, saw my chickens, my cows. Everybody's going crazy. Looked up, saw some bright lights, panicked, ran back inside, called nine one one. Then there, your free, famous friend over there, Sheriff Pike, he came by. Well, unfortunately, Bright last lights. Time Next caller. Okay. <laughs> now, hi, hi there, Danny. Is this Danny and the Sheriff? This is your Danny Gordon with WFXR, and you're on Danny. the air. And this hey, is Danny, the Sheriff. Sheriff Danny, it's me, Bern Durgan Bergen. And uh, I seen it last night. I seen these white lights that are streaking up the sky. What'd you see, Dur- this- Dur- Bergen, Dur- Bergen, Dur- Bergen? <laughs> They scared my wife and my kids. My kids were up there playing in the yard. They were crying. But I don't know what I seen. I seen then I seen to them ships flying over the sky so fast. They middle tear green or something. Mm, they were ha- chasing. Nope. Next caller. Danny. 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 This is Danny. Danny. You're on the air. Caller number six, right? Call him for the John Denver tickets. You guys give those away yet? Caller number six. Sorry, caller, you're caller number three. Son of a bitch! I may or may not have those tickets in my back pocket right now, but... Uh, is this, uh... Am I on? Am I on? Next caller. Oh, caller, you're on the air on. with oh, Danny Gordon and the uh, sheriff. And the I've been sheriff. trying... I got the craziest story, man. I've been trying to get on forever. I got the craziest story for you guys. You wouldn't even know. My friends were at the school. It was like 100 meters away from me. And then, like, man, this is crazy. And I'm on the show. And then, like, what happened? What happened? What happened? And Where'd I, you like, go? turned around. I turned around and went home. And my friends were there, but they were, they were like, whoa. Where were they? What were they doing? What's going on? What's happening with you? What did you see? And then, and then I was like, then, you know, no, then earlier we were crossing the street to go. And I. <laughs> All right. And LSD oh, is a hell of a drug. And that's the end of that call. <laughs> Uh, yeah, as you can see, hey, listen, hey, am I on? Can you hear well, me? We can take one caller, more caller for the night. Yeah. Caller, you're on the air. Well, I just wanted to reach out to everybody really quick. That if anybody's come in contact with any of these bright lights, anybody's feeling very stressed out and confused and don't know about their feelings and stirred up, that you can contact Dr. Sprinkles at 1 800 999 3674, and Dr. Sprinkles will help you with hypnotic regression therapies and talk you through this. Okay, there is no self promotion on the show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's basically what a day in the life of Danny Gordon was every mm-hmm. single day. Mm-hmm. After and and the sheriff. <laughs> Danny and the sheriff. Whoa. Pew, pew, pew. They really were trying to capture two different audiences in Withville, but they only had one radio station, right? They had they had no one else for the job. Yeah. Um so yeah, and after after these this just like 
a flood of calls coming into the thing. Danny really got on the UFO believer train and he was kind of determined to find out what was going on and get to the bottom of this UFO, like genuine UFO flap that was going on in Withville, Virginia. And before he uh, gets to find out what's going on, we're going to take a quick beer break. We'll be right back.
Uh, we're back. Uh, just before the break, uh, Danny was, he's, as Dan was leading into, he's, because he, he feels, I guess, a sense of responsibility because he's the one that bro- not really broke this story, but brought this story to the forefront. You know, it's, he's, Obviously, wants to strike Seeing while the dollar eyes bills, hot. buddy. Well, he's, be, yeah, he's become the focal. Cow. Well, yeah, he's been. Well, he's, he's become the focal cow. point for it. Like all of these people are calling into him yeah. now. Um, like he's become the the focus now of like all these people calling in with their various reports. And I'm sure he does feel some some type of responsibility because he is a uh, he is a with Phil. He's, well, he's with Phil, born and raised. Like all I these do. people, he probably knows these people. Like I heard he fucking wouldn't pay for parking tickets, anything like that. He just tell everybody, <laughs> I am with Phil. All right, <laughs> I'm the voice of Withville. <laughs> yeah, nobody fucks with Danny. Mm. Fucking Withville, number Nobody's one. Carlson. Uh, He's got. I picture him as like the Fraser Crane. <laughs> uh, so, but the by, this is by far my favorite part is because he's like, okay, well, I got to get to the bottom of this. Have to. And I think these might be, you know, some sort of experimental aircrafts being flown by military personnel. Out of Langley, which hey, reasonable, plausible, plausible, one hundred percent, undeniable. If it was yeah. right, so he calls the military base. He calls him right. He's like, I need, I need to talk to hello, whoever. military base. Yeah. <laughs> is that you? <laughs> this is this is the voice of Withville. <laughs> <laughs> K ninety seven seven Danny. They're like who? Yeah. Danny Gordon. Like who? <laughs> Danny Gordy. <laughs> and he's. He tells, he tells, he accounts, he goes, and you know, they were a little apprehensive to talk to me. So I assured them. They're like, hey, listen. Comped them a few tickets to fucking John Denver. And they go, <laughs> here's they a little John Denver ticket. Nice fucking birds. And all I need from you is if this is top secret military experimental crafts being flown in the skies, just let me know and I won't say a word. Because I'm a patriot. Guy's a patriot. <laughs> and they're like, guy's a patriot. Patriots are uh, very no comment. Well, this this was this was a this was 1987. Being a patriot was still cool. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not cool, but that's not going to get you any kind of top secret. He uh, he also called these like you know what? While I'm at it, president at the time. <laughs> this is Danny Gordon, the voice of Withville. I just want to know, or CIA president. Were you involved in the JFK killing? Because if you were, you can tell me, and I'll end it right here. I want because I'm a patriot. patriot. <laughs> I'm a patriot. NASA, did you really go to the moon or not? You can tell me if you didn't, and I won't say nothing because I'm a patriot. Uh, yeah, uh, Danny was making multiple calls to military bases and military officials, like trying to get somebody to go on record or even off the record uh, to to kind of explain what was going on uh out there you know uh and the kind of the general explanation that dude he was he looking got for his them. big break he was looking for his big break he, if i've had one of those guys listen to him and been like oh you're a patriot and he's like yeah and they're like okay listen it is us it's top secret military craft don't say anything yeah, he would have been the know. next board and be like hey breaking news <laughs> i'm danny gordon this my is inside sheriff. sources yeah. well think about how quickly he fucking flipped his other source Sheriff Pike. Sheriff, yeah. yep. As soon as he started writing books, he's like, I got all my info from Pike every fucking morning. I'm sure yeah. that's confidential shit. He's not supposed to be telling the radio host. Yeah, 100%. 100%. I'm like, come on. Uh, so the, the general explanation that he got from most of the military officials is Danny said that he was getting reports that these were planes refueling this is what the people are seeing like you know the, because people are explaining seeing like you know two lights come together and then the, the lights would part and come apart so he was saying that they were having you know uh that th- this is what they were seeing but danny was like no i okay. he he called the pentagon he called officials at the <laughs> pentagon <laughs> mr um, pentagon this is danny gordon and uh you know apparently he said that he talked to an air force general there an air force general or a major um and and told me that um if they're if quote if who (laughs) quote if they're refueling under thirteen thousand feet then somebody's butt is in a sling uh and to this day we don't what does that mean well it means they're fucked like they're how do you sling a butt 
No, you're in trouble. Put in a big old, you make a big slingshot. Big old yeah. You place the butt in, in the slingshot and you shoot it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if um, know. One, of, one of the he officials that he got the name was uh, Major Ed Harrell and said that, uh, quote, we are conducting refueling operations from our base north through the Wythe County and New River area, but we do not refuel at low altitudes. Our operation in no way could be what the Wythe Countyans are seeing as oh, ufos great. at three thousand feet and under so from what these people were seeing that you know these aircraft were flying you know reportedly very low he's like it couldn't have been us like we're not we're not gonna fly that well, low because he explained that we don't do refueling that low because of turbulence like it would just be a terrible thing to do and dangerous and also with counties with counties i mean i don't know what else with like what else do you go on? <laughs> with villains with villains yeah, that's way cooler. Well, uh, I think they're it's, it's their sports teams County. are called the villains. Like it'd be fucking bad. I think it's with county. Like it's so they go like with the you can call them withians or with countyans. Yeah, counties, uh, <laughs> I would the, think you uh, call them withians. <laughs> it's to me though, like yeah. even the the idea of bringing up that this would be some sort of like low altitude refueling, because if they were that low, there would be no fucking like there would be you no ifs them. ands or but you'd be like those are planes. Oh. Look, that one looks. There's a huge one. Well, they would be silent. Other ones. Yeah. <laughs> right. They don't have silent fucking refueling planes that we know of. We should call up the CIA and ask them. Yeah, no problem. Well, <laughs> Just we're call them. NSA, if you're listening, you can let us know. We're patriots. <laughs> um. So, uh, you know. Danny's trying to chase it down every every type of authority and person that he can he can possibly find to, to figure out what's going on. So he said that he tried to contact, you know, national UFO groups. Nobody answered his calls, which is strange um, that, you know, yeah, usually they think they'd be all over this. No, oh, he wanted right. the story to himself. He just lied. He didn't call um, and so he kind of said that he was at this point, after he wasn't getting any phone calls back from any of the UFO groups, local, local or national, you know, he was ready to kind of hang up, you know, hang up the story. But uh, a lady called him who identified herself as one Barbara Finney, uh, who is a resident of Troutdale, Virginia, and who was a uh, UFO expert, is that which she, uh, she claimed as her title. So yeah. and she yeah. offered to yeah. come to with County. I mean, it's like, I mean, ufo expert i mean we're ufo experts technically <laughs> i'm not well at least like me and brayden i am I uh, am UFO brayden 100 is I've, a ufo I've, expert every single You've day i watch i watch every new video submitted on mufon and every new picture submitted every single day with my coffee <laughs> every single day um yeah but i'm not i fucking that's what i watch sports like i'm not a sports expert yeah but after a while, uh, uh, you were like, if you watch, no, like, I've been you're fucking, a football expert, I, you know, like, you know, no, like, you're watching football. I know a lot about it, but I'm not an expert. Yeah. Well, in uh, an unknown field, I am it. an expert. Of an No, you're a professional. You you're a professional if you get paid. An expert, yeah. you can just be an expert. You don't have to get paid. I don't think so. <laughs> you can just, if you, if you say you're an expert. Self-proclaimed. You you're self-proclaim it. You can be an expert. Yeah. I don't know. Listen, I'll tell you what. I know for a fucking first hand, I've seen a video that you've watched that was clearly an un unidentified flying object object and you fucking just you know scoffed at it and called it a bug all right it was clearly a ufo okay. it was clearly a 30 foot serpent creature yeah centipede or whatever remember that what's that game called centipede centipede yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so uh barbara finney offered to come to with county and to kind of give her uh you know lend her expert opinion uh, and experience to 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 help danny kind of figure out what was going on um so her and her husband came down uh to withville and or with county and they accompanied uh they went with uh, let's see. Uh, they went with Danny. You know they went with Danny. The Withville. <laughs> yeah, they went with the Withville, and they uh, they went to an area which was known as the Rural Retreat Lake, which sounds like a fucking horror movie place. Um, but you know, uh, you know for a second, like this guy is a fucking Doug. Like, remember Mel from Flight of the Concords, her husband Doug, that just tails yeah. around. Oh yeah, just supports her. <laughs> right? This guy's a Doug. Doug just, the he's cuck. Like, he's like, oh yeah. hi, hey, how's it going? Yeah. yeah. That's Doug, that's Doug standing over there by the car, yeah. like twenty feet away. Like, hey, hey hon. <laughs> hey, shh, shh. <laughs> so, I'm talking. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so get in uh, the car, Doug. <laughs> the, um, Don't you to wait in the car. 
it was a pretty it was a pretty large group that they had going with them they uh they had joe heldreth who was a longtime friend and reporter for the southwest times you had mark bose who was a reporter for the richmond news um and then uh, Richmond News leader and the Worth County Sheriff went, or you know, our favorite sheriff Wayne Pike also went with them, um, and so they all kind of went out there to keep their eyes on the skies, essentially, and just kind of go go see what was going on if they could catch uh, the phenomenon. Well, here's my that question: was, like, little drugs. What's this expert <laughs> going to bring to the table in this situation? Like, are you going to like, is she going to grab a little bit of grass and put in the wind and listen to the ground and be like, UFOs will probably be this way. <laughs> like, I, uh, what would you do, Braden? Because you're an expert. What would you do to fucking go to a good spot to fucking view these UFOs? Yeah, first step, walk well, us through it. Walk yeah. us through it. Let's hear it. You got an EMF reader? Like, what are you going to do here, buddy? Well, first of, all, so I, first off, yeah. I'd, uh, I'd contact the local radio host. Uh, well, you're with him. Yeah, right. But uh, He called I, you. Yeah, he called me. No, I called yeah. him and offered oh, okay. my expertise. Oh, okay, okay, right. Okay. Um, oh, so you're like people don't sort see you like find you you find them you find them yeah i'm like yeah. uh like the expert jack reacher <laughs> okay. right? i find you when you need me the most yeah, you're definitely <laughs> reaching <laughs> <laughs> right and then i uh first off i'd say i'd be like you know we first off obviously you know it goes without saying you got to keep those eyes on the sky so you want to be out there where you want yeah. to you want to be a spot with big sky right okay right so I hear um it. I don't personally, I don't believe in any of that CE5 stuff. I don't believe you got to meditate. I don't think any of that. I'm a, I'm a new age. No incense or anything? I'm, I'm just, I'm just a firm believer. If you wait out there and patient enough, these things, you will see them. I'd bring a green laser pointer, you know, just in case to okay. differentiate planes from UFOs. Cause if you shine at a plane, plane crashes, you know, it's human, right? Okay. Easy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right? Okay. yeah. If you can blind <laughs> a human, it crashes. Yeah. yeah. I like this theory. Right. You yeah, always aim out. for the cockpit because. Mm-hmm. That's well. That's what like aliens don't have a cockpit. We're seeing, seeing. So so far we have going outside and looking up <laughs> federal felony. <laughs> federal yeah. felony. You want the FAA to come and arrest you? Yes. And then... Right. And then when you see a weird light, you go, "Whoa! Did you see that? That was yeah. weird." Yep. Yeah. UFO. Okay. Um. So as they were out there, uh, Danny, uh, as Danny tells it, they they saw pretty much nothing but stars and, you know, for, and, you know, a few distant airplanes that they could see until <laughs> something were, as they were snuggling up on a blanket with Doug in the car <laughs> uh, until something caught their eye. And uh, they pointed it out excitedly. He like, said that Ooh, it's really cold out here and I didn't bring my jacket. <laughs> uh danny said him and his group uh you know his reporter friends i'll i'll watch this this distant object that seemed to be like moving around or vibrating in the in the air and just seemed to change color colors erratically and like they, they were like that's it that's the thing that everybody's been seeing it's, it's something and it's moving uh through the sky um barbara ufo expert as she is uh apparently <laughs> kind of just took a long breath and then said I'm sorry to tell you guys, but what you're seeing is a star working its way through the atmosphere. Um, what? Now, <laughs> so what the fuck does that mean? So I think Finney never heard that fucking explanation before. So the Finney star. said, <laughs> Finney I mean, said she had been balloon. Inv- I would have believed. <laughs> Uh, Finney said she had been investigating UFO sightings for about nine years, so close to a decade, um, and her 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 expertise like led her to say like you know it, this is a thing and i've seen this before like when you have stars that are like just because the atmosphere is there right so it interferes with the light that's coming through it and you have a star coming through there it can look like that star is wobbling it can look like the star is wobbling it can change colors um it happens with mars i've seen it happen with mars sometimes if you actually observe it like looks like it's kind of shaky but at, at like a certain point where it hits it like it stabilizes and she kind of told them just just wait a second and then wait for it to like kind of like go a little bit further like where from the air you know the spot in the sky that it is and just wait for it to move a little bit and then you'll see it settle down and it did and she called it out just exactly and it, it happened and they're like she oh she is so expert. that's kind of strange they're like oh okay so is but that but then she's also like that might not be what everybody's seen but i can definitely like we can rule out some things right so she was like she's not in there to just be like okay everything's ufo and like yeah that's a you know 
let's start meditating at it and get it to manifest it's you know <laughs> get it out there she's like she kind of knows seems to know what she was she was talking about she was a skeptical thing and you know, in her investigations like she'd been doing this stuff for you know close to a decade um she said she had actually like published her own monthly newsletter for a time which she but she had to end up actually giving it up because she had so many people uh, who she described as kooks uh writing to her and then somebody actually started tampering with her mail at some point because she was publishing this newsletter and she had to stop <laughs> uh, getting too close to the truth yeah that's exactly it that's a good it's, call yeah that's exactly what it is <laughs> um and so fr from this, like, again, national, this was getting national coverage. This was getting news. This was getting news up and down, at least up and down the East Coast. You were having news, uh, news teams come down and do reports on this. And apparently, like, in, in Danny's opinion, like, with seeing it like that, because he was keeping up with all the things that were being put out, he said there, there were some great stories done on the UFO sightings. Um, but some of them, uh, I guess, were uh, kind of uh, the, the ones that had him had his phones ringing off the hooks or the ones that didn't do it justice, I suppose. So there were a lot of with countings that were actually kind of up in arms about some of the news stories that seemed to approach it with a type of like sarcasm and tried to paint with Bill as this kind of hick town. Uh, well, yeah, I, you know, I can see people being mad. Like, Hey, like Sark town, you're fucking taking, you know, having a laugh at us, having a, having a funny at our expense. Yeah, you know, you're thinking that everybody out there just drinks moonshine and is just like going half blind and thinks that they're just seeing a whole bunch of stuff, um, you know, but like the you got one eye that works. <laughs> um, so you have the um, apparently at least one of the stories like that story that that, that specific story that uh, Gordon referred to, <laughs> like there was enough pressure from the with County residents that they actually forced a public apology from that network's <laughs> reporter. Like they had to go on and like apologize for what they, what they did. All and then 8,200 people wrote in. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Well, apparently the apology aired on one of Gordon's like newscasts. So his, uh, one of his with Phil news at nine or whatever, like he actually aired it, you know, and to, placate the the with i don't know so they don't take up their pitchforks i guess um and then you had a you know they, apparently they had another television news anchor that just laughed right after introducing the segment you know <laughs> which is like I, I i think we've all seen that where it's like people like yeah. you know somebody's like a local resident man you know says that he's seen a ufo <laughs> you know a little snicker or sly smile yeah. or whatever you see those kind of things you know indicating that they're not exactly taking it seriously and the resident said they they actually called the, that news station and then they called him and then they uh, called danny Corden and they were demanding another apology for blatant <laughs> making fun of our people and community so they were not they did not take kindly to uh those who oh, were yeah. like, who were Fucking uh, don't make poking fun, fun with right Phil when, yeah. when Mr. Mr. With Phil's on the watch. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and so it wasn't just, it wasn't just like nameless residents of Whitfield that were just getting these things. Apparently like one of the, one of the people who saw a UFO was Ann B. Crockett Stark, who is the with, who is the wife of Whitfield's mayor, uh, who had been mayor for nearly three decades, apparently like, oh, like mayor for like 30 years, uh, who is Dr. Boy, Carl no E. Stark. He's, he's no running one, against no a fucking dog him. or something. No one opposed uh, him. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Carl E. Stark, you know, father to Tony Stark, you know, everybody knows that. Um, and so, um, he, he remarked on this situation that he was, that he felt proud. This is the, the mayor speaking that he felt proud of the community because everybody was kind of pro approaching it very sensibly, you know, and this is still at a time where it's like, everybody's kind of like remembering, you know, war of the world's news broadcast and everybody freaking out, putting pots and pans on top of their heads and, you know, getting their rifles and charging out into the mountains. And he's like, no, it's like, that's not really happening. Um, you know, it's like we seem to be taking it all in stride. Um, and, you know, well, they it, were already wearing pots for hats and living in the mountains. So, well, <laughs> and then we're going to get a call from Withville. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have to give a public apology to the people of Withville. We get an email from Danny Gordon. I heard your podcast. Cease I want and a, desist. Yeah, yeah. I want a public apology. I demand a public apology to the, pe the, the good, to good the voice people. To the of Withville. To the good people of Withville County. Uh, or Withville County. Um, so, 
apparently the mayor didn't really have a problem with the labeling this like a UFO invasion or just kind of like kind of rolling with it because he felt that apparently like it was it was bringing in these these newspaper uh, reporters and things. Yeah, they were bringing in money. It helped out the motel and the restaurant businesses locally. So he's like, he had no problem being like, yeah, UFOs, like come and see them, like come down to Withville, catch yourself Dude, a UFO. It's, it's literally every single one of these cities that has one of these sightings, the mayor's always on board instantly. Yeah, of course. Like right? Merchandise, We're, buddy. Yeah. Movies. <laughs> he's seeing just you. dollar signs. Let's he's go. like, new Tax tourist dollars. info. Right. Yep. In the shape of the UFO. Um, yeah, one one of the other people who took advantage of the whole situation was one Richard Philippi, uh, who is apparently a building contractor and a co owner of, of the Texaco travel store and the Comfort Inn in Withville. Like, dude is an entrepreneur yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, his his store started selling t shirts with the message with County Virginia, the UFO capital of Virginia on them. Uh, apparently with a little illustration of UFO. And he said that, uh, Line that he, the shelves. yeah, they, they, he said they sold out as fast as they could make them. And most of the people who were buying them were the visiting reporters. Like, cause I mean, you'd want a souvenir if you drove all the way down four hours to well, go to no, Withville. No, I, they, they were <laughs> buying them. They were buying them. So when they stood in front of the, like, and tonight at six, I'm uh, on the location with the UFO fly. And they're wearing the stupid shirt. Guarantee you every <laughs> single one of them. Um, and so, uh, like we said, Dan Danny was still very much a, a skeptic of one of those things, but he was going out there like a, a couple nights in a row. Like he was going out and, and looking for these things, like looking for the UFOs and trying to catch, uh, this, what was going on. And so one of those, one of these nights, uh, specifically October 21st, uh, just two weeks after that first sighting, Danny, uh, and his friend Roger Hall actually drove to the area where they, where they had marked out that the most of the sightings had actually occurred. And so according to Danny, they brought along a 35 millimeter still camera as well as a video camera to make, to catch, you know, that, you know, get photographic and video evidence like for sure this is what's happening now once they got out there they didn't really see anything they were just about ready to give up but danny said that on you know here's what he said in the quote we were headed we were headed home after two hours of fruitless searching and i just happened to look to my left and i saw a very unusual object coming across the horizon i pulled off to the side of the road in a hurry jumped out uh he got out on the right side so he's talking about um he's talking about his buddy roger hall uh, and as i got out i noticed the craft coming at me was very large it had a dome shape on the top of it no wings and it had what appeared to be a strobe putting out multicolored lights on the right side of the craft as i watched the sky from the left came a red ball as the big mothership as he starts calling it went into a small skiff of clouds the red ball red ball seemed to dock with the craft and then he looked at each other or they they looked at each other apparently and then they realized they didn't have their cameras in their hands because they were just staring at this <laughs> thing <laughs> none of them had it. like they were outside of the car both of them had left their cameras like in the back like they had left the video camera in the back seat and then the camera like the the camera was like on the dash of the car and they had left it in there because they had really, both got out. And no, the, the one reason they had went out there. And that's they both what I mean. Like, your only point for <laughs> doing this. And you fucking shit the bed. Like, Yeah, I but I can see, it. like, you see something amazing like that to me. That gives it more. Because, like, if I saw something all, like, you're just like, holy shit. If the last the thing case, on my mind would be camera. If that were the case, then fucking Twitter and social media would be blank. Because all this crazy shit that's happening, everybody pops out their cell phones and films it right yeah, away. Yeah, but this this is yeah because you had it on, you're used to that. Like yeah, that's it's in the culture. car. They're in the car. They get yeah, out of the car. Yeah, but it's not like you carried cameras. everyone Don't carried a camera with them all the time, right? So these guys. Yeah, you think? But that's why we're here. I see this. This is why we're here. Let's get a fucking picture. Uh, so a few days a few days later, Danny actually called a pre like he organized a press conference. Like he went all in on this. Um, putting together this this whole kind of conference together and his kind of central idea was that he was going to get more data uh than just the radio call-ins like he was going to get to to try and make sense of what exactly was going on um he had uh, he had arranged for barbara finney the ufo expert that he had had brought out there uh before to come out um, he was making his own contact in the desert <laughs> uh they had they had uh, David Bodner, who lived in West Virginia and was pretty much the nearest representative of MUFON, uh, Mutual UFO Network, uh, to come in and whatever. Now, to come in and kind of like he was going to I think he was going to phone in like he couldn't make it. So he was going to phone in 
uh, you know, to, to talk in there. So as he's getting this already, the night before the press conference, Danny said that he actually received a phone call from somebody who refused to identify themselves. And he said that he... <laughs> that he needed to you be aware. Me, but I you know you. A for, 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 for. Uh, he said that he needed to be aware that the CIA and the federal government were very much interested in with county UFOs. Um, and so at this point, Danny starts wondering about like what he's gotten himself into that he's getting these random calls. Um, you know, and his even his wife was kind of telling him like maybe we should, you should back off You're of this. Close like, to the truth, Danny. you know, we've got kids, like we've got kids, like all this stuff that's kind of going on. Um, you know, stuff's getting kind of weird. And now that we're getting anonymous phone calls, uh, saying that it's not your place to be messing in defense matters. Uh, yeah, you know, going to fuck around and get leukemia. That's, that's the <laughs> warning before they kill your dog. Pretty much. <laughs> um, they threatened him with leukemia. They did. He said, weaponized my, leukemia. My son was, he was on the truth like you and he got viral leukemia. Um, so by Danny's reckoning that I don't think that's a thing. I don't, I'm not, no, it's not. I don't think that's definitely not a fucking thing. Uh, Reports reports of the press conference that it went it went fairly well, except there were a couple technical hiccups. I think they um like the, the phone call kind of cut off, like the phone call didn't get all the way through, so they only got a, a couple bits of that as it went in and out. Um, Danny Danny actually got some people to come up and like tell their stories of their sightings about what they had seen. It it, it kind of almost became like an in person call in show uh, at that point, a kind of live version of his news uh, of his news show. Uh, and then bringing people up to, to kind of tell their stories and just more of that stuff. So a mixture of of local and and national news networks are actually there, including the National Enquirer, which was still big back then. You know, kind of skeptical, uh, usual skeptical magazine kind of coming yeah. in and be whatever. And apparently, Danny even like Danny had gotten some photos. Apparently, after the night that they had not gotten the photos, they went out the night you know before the conference in between then and gotten some photos of, of what he thought were ufos and he showed it to the national Enquirer guy and the national Enquirer guy is like nah like this isn't good enough they're just blurry these are just blurry, blurry pictures of, of yeah, lights so i'm and not sure they, and that's exactly what get. those those pictures look like it just looks like night shots of lights you're like <laughs> you can't tell shit dude like shooting your camera at night has come a long way automatically but like Back then, it was not something that like an amateur was good at. Just like, oh, well, you could just point and click your camera, like difficult. And it shows in these photos. It just fucking you're like, that's a light. I don't know what else I'm looking. at. There's no frame of reference. There's no nothing. So you can't see shit. It's a light. So after after the press conference, Danny reported that he discovered that his house had actually been broken into and nothing was stolen according to him but um danny was convinced that they were actually looking for his photographs like the photographs that he had taken um so um after after the press conference like like danny he danny was they, well the national they, they laced, didn't even fucking laced, want him but the military was all over them maybe they laced his bed sheets with leukemia well, I think yeah. I think after after the after the press conference, like apparently Danny had kind of scheduled to go to a like an event. He was either going to speak an event or he was going to organize. He was going to go somewhere where they were having another kind of basically like a like an alien con or con whatever, you know, like they were having like a convention. He was, he was circuit. Yeah. Yeah. He was going to go like either speak there about what was going on. He got a phone call. Like he got another phone call. Like Travis saying that Walton it, was like, "Listen, motherfucker, there's only room for one of us." Maybe it was something like that, and it was, but it You're was somebody telling team. him that he was like going to contract some kind of like disease, like if he went to that thing, like that's where they were going to get him. Um, you know, not that call, but like the shadowy forces that abound in the, you know, the United States government uh, UFO cover up. Like that, they said like that's what's going to happen if you go to this thing, and so. You know, he He's was still getting a warning. He was getting a warning that like, don't go. He, you go yeah. You're it's like, it's on you if you go. And so he, he told his wife and stuff kind of like, they kind of talked it out and he's like, all right, well, you know, I'm done with this kind of just whatever. Well, so he, he says this great <laughs> thing. He has this great line. He says, if you watch, there's an episode of unsolved mystery <laughs> season four or something, he goes, listen. And then at that point, you know, it's fine to threaten me, but when you threaten my wife and my kids, you're treading on thin water, my friend. Right? I was very angry. So I did what a anyone else would do. I 
had to protect myself and I hid. I'm just no way I I'm not doing it. I back down right immediately. But he yeah, like the way he tread, pumps it up. You don't tread on thin water. Yeah. You don't not out not with old Danny Gordon. Uh, it's so funny. Instantly, he starts talking this tough game, and he's like, "So I immediately back down, didn't go. That's it. Mm-hmm. Not not doing it anymore." Uh, yeah. So he kind of gave up with that, and you know, compiled his stuff into the the book we mentioned earlier with uh, with his buddy, and kind of came out with it. Like, and and that was what it is. So uh, the people of Withville within like this three month period, uh, kind of racked up more than fifteen hundred sightings of what they you know claimed were ufos yeah but you know what like at that point yeah at that point though it's like you have because it's such a sense and like again you go out anyone i'm telling you right now you go out on a nice clear night with a big sky spend two three hours max you will see something that you go i don't know what that was it doesn't mean it's always a ufo doesn't mean it but now you have a whole town and every single person going out Right, even you know, guys drinking moonshine, only made it to grade four. They're looking up. They're like, they see a star pop at dust. They're like, oh, Dad, look at that! There it is! Woo, saw one. Yeah, it's a pretty and down there would be pretty nice because it's like, yeah, it would be big open sky down there, not a lot of light pollution. Like down there, it's it's big rural country down in the the Blue Ridge down there. So yeah, I imagine you see all kinds of stuff. (laughs) Right, so it's like it's 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 tough. Like that to me is like when all of a sudden you see that many are they all you know can you discredit all of them no of course not but i would say just based off that i would i would chop that number by 90 percent at least of legit (laughs) what was legit (laughs) everything else was i would attribute to just people going crazy because it's a wild wild story at this point right it's hot like everyone wants everyone wants to be a part of history right i saw it wants to talk to danny Yep, everybody wants to be on Danny's show. Everybody wants to talk to the voice of Withville. Everybody wants to be whispering in Withville, baby. Well, if he got Danny hundreds of calls a day, how many Danny how many Bill. days? Let's do math. What eighty days till we talk to the whole town? <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, right the you know, is, we know firsthand that in call-in shows, there's always repeat callers. Oh yeah, so there's some, there's some guy calling 150 fucking times on that show. <laughs> every every, every guys 20 Noah minutes. is what you're saying. Hi, hey, uh, no names. Withville's no. Hey, Danny, this is Chris from with Withville. <laughs> uh, sorry, Chris from Denver. Just... Yeah, we love you. Uh, some guy's calling every time. He's he's fall he's following it. He he gets hung up on. It, he just immediately dials back, giving you live updates the whole time. Mm-hmm. So I believe the mystery still continues to this day because I'm sure if you go to Withville, they're still seeing UFOs down that down that. I mean, you still got Langley over there. You still got all kinds of you know testing going on. UFOs maybe want to keep an eye on Langley. Maybe Langley wants to keep an eye on the UFOs. Who knows? Uh, it's just go down there and get yourself a T-shirt. Uh, yeah. Withville, Ca- Withville County, <laughs> capital UFO capital of Virginia. <laughs> right and like. It's the thing to me is like in this story, there's definitely something that went on in Withville just because of the initial, like when you talk about it, so many people like I saw something too. The fact that Danny Gordon gets kind of tied up in, in this is like, he is painfully obvious to me. Just looking at this as his claim to fame, right? Like he, he can make a buck off it. He, he, he's doing whatever he can to keep it in the spotlight kind of thing. But it's like, that doesn't negate the fact that he ran this story and he was going to run it as a joke because he thought it was funny. He thought it was funny. He was the same way we bashed, you know, I mean, did he run it because he thought it was funny or did he run it because he had nothing fucking else to talk about? He, well, maybe not people, a lot going on. He, in that said, town. he said, I usually ran a ha ha at the end of the show. And this was tonight's ha ha. And then, and then the town, like, Obviously, there was something going on where it sparked that much of an interest in the town being like, I saw something too. Like, that's not a, there's something, something going on, right? So, like, to me, like, that initial, that initial thing, the initial sighting that the sheriff, I would say, like, that is something of interest to me. Like, that initial sighting, because it obviously sparked enough people calling in being like, I saw it too. 
that kind of set this firestorm of media interest away and it, it, it and it's kind of it kind of turns into a circus show after that right like if like ah, i see you go out night tonight i saw another one here's a picture of my blurry pictures right like danny gordon's just kind of a grifter in my opinion of trying to like monetize this to the full extent he's like this is my ticket to the national radio <laughs> his, his ticket out of Wittville. <laughs> is he still on the radio today that is the question Nobody knows. <laughs> if you're from this area, mm. you tune into the station still. Danny WFXR. Is WFXR even still a radio station? <laughs> WFXR. Yeah, he's still. Virginia. He speaks. He speaks. He spoke at the Withville UFO Fest. Uh, I last watched June. that video on YouTube. Oh, guess what? When this is released, this will probably be like, when this release is probably on the 2023 with Phil yeah. UFO Fest. Boom. Nice. Right, yeah, I know. It's weird. No, last weird. Was in June. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if they're doing it. Let's see if they're doing it. Is it with... Happy, happy birthday with Phil UFO Fest. <laughs> happy with... with What do we call them? With Phil Countians? Happy, happy with, UFO with Fest with Phil... With, with Villians. Oh, it starts in four days. So it's on... Oh, it's gonna, yeah. We'll be we're close. Anyways, you know, we're we're, they, we're close. We're look close. At, look at this. They got a fucking dope logo. I know. Look at this. It's like kind of like our '80s logo. Uh, where is it? This one. Is that working? Yep. Oh wow, that's, that's cool. Dope. That's a really cool logo, actually. <laughs> that is really cool. Really cool. I don't know I why. No, they, wonder, I, no wonder why everyone was buying the shirts. Yeah, I'd buy that. Shirt I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why they had mushrooms. Was, is Whitfield famous for mushrooms? <laughs> well, that uh, would have, that would explain uh, whoever why fucking threw it was on mushrooms. Fifteen hundred sightings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that's assisted art, and the assist is oh, cyber yeah. selling. <laughs> Absolutely. But it's a, it's 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 an interesting. It's a cool case. It, it's always cool when you have that many people that are so interested in the topic and they're like, we, we're seeing stuff in the skies. And you got to think that these people are right when they say like they'd know a plane because like you would hear it. You would hear a low, like a the explanations that this is possibly a jet refueling, I think are preposterous that people would mistake that. I personally have never seen a jet refueling at 13,000 feet. What I feel like I would know when I saw yeah, that, I'd be see like, a bunch of people with their asses and slings. No, Braden's, yeah. an, Braden's an expert. We've already, yeah, I'm we, an expert. We, we've already oh, yeah, he's covered this. Huh. Anything in the God sky, Braden. I'm forgetting. Yeah, if it's in the sky, within the atmosphere, expert. If it's unidentified, I'm an expert at. I tell you, that's unidentified. <laughs> well, no, no. I'm an expert at going, like, yeah, I don't know what that is. That's unidentified. That's pretty crazy. Right? Or, but a lot of times now I can be like, I've seen enough from like China balloons, China balloons, Mylar balloon, <laughs> China balloon, Bug. China lantern, China lantern, skydiver with flare. Yeah, those ones are cool though. Yeah, they do look cool. They look really fucking cool. Um, yeah. Anything else before we wrap this one up? Hopefully, you would attend the festival. If you attended the yeah, festival, you have let us know how it was. Get down um, right now. All right, this uh, theorite of the week. Um, this theorite needs our help. Uh, if you're on our Facebook group, it's pinned. Uh, GoFundMe for Kyle. Uh, Kyle is currently uh, battling cancer. Uh, he's fighting hard. He's got, uh, you know, family stuff. Everyone's looking out for him, and uh, we wish, we hope him the best. And uh, if you're interested in helping out Kyle's GoFundMe, helping his family, support him. Um, in his fight so he can you know with bills and stuff uh the gofundme is pinned on our facebook page uh facebook.com slash alien theorist theorizing group you can join it it's uh pinned right on the page there i'll post it on the page again and just pin it to the top we'll, we'll put it um, in the podcast go, description as well yeah go help yeah, out if you absolutely. can um you know good old boy been a theorite for a long time uh and cancer sucks man so let's help him kick Fuck cancer's cancer. ass absolutely so, Kyle, to you, Kyle. And you and yours, you're the theorite of the week, and uh, hopefully 
we can uh, kick cancer's ass with you. Okay, All right. All right, and if you're not supporting the show and you want early access to bonus stuff, the Discord, all of the goodies, you got to go to alienbeers.com, hit that support tab, or on Patreon or Supercast, you can do the same thing. This week's new supporters are Matthew. You guys have pledged a few different times, but I don't mind reading it. Zell is by far the best one. Paul Zeitman and Bear Country goes up in a very long time. Ooh. And as we always say at the end of these things, don't look up, because if you look up, then people are going to come around and ask you about what you're looking up about. You might get leukemia. Gonna, then you're going to get leukemia. <laughs> you don't want to look up anymore. <laughs> Keep his eyes on the stars. I think I it's funny because I haven't got 